Hi, this is Lizette Chevalier, and I'm giving a lecture on numerical integration and differentiation with a specific focus on Richardson's extrapolation. This is part of ENGR 351, Numerical Methods for Engineers. Now what I want to do to start off Richardson's extrapolation is to take a look at some examples we've already worked with. We were asked earlier to integrate the following using the trapezoidal rule, the Simpson's one-third rule, and a multiple application of the trapezoidal rule with n equal 2 and the Simpson's three-eighths three rule and to compare the results with the analytical solution. So here I'm integrating between 0 and 4, the function x equal to e2 to x. So the strategy is always to solve the problem analytically to get a baseline for what we're doing. And your error will be based on this true va value, and we'll use the equation epsilon t. To do that, you first have to isolate the function, graphically consider the problem, then identify the governing equation for each estimate, and for each method, determine n and h. Make a table of x and fx, and estimate the integral and then compare your results. So our analytical solution is 5,216.9 or 5,217. Now let's consider a single application of the trapezoidal rule. And I'm showing that graphically here. So what we're doing is we're going between 0 and 4. And so this red line is showing us the function itself. So this whole area that we're seeing underneath the red line and between the function, there's all of our error. Because the actual result is what would be under this line here. So when we evaluate the function at 0, we get 0. When we evaluate the function at 4, we get almost 12,000. So if we take the average of those two, which is what I'm showing here, and then of course uh, the difference between the two, we get an estimate of the integral to be 23,847.66. And this gives us a 357% error. So now let's look at the Simpson's one-third rule. When we do the Simpson's one-third rule, here's, here's our, our governing algorithm here. We need to determine the um, value at x0, x1, and x2. And so this would give us the 0, an x of 0, an x of 2, and an x of 4. And when we do that, we can see that the error is somewhat reduced. Now we're moving a little closer here. Um, to what we would see. So when I do that and plug the values in, I get 8,240.41. So I've reduced this error to 57.96. Now let's do a multiple application of the trapezoidal rule. So our first application would be done in this region between 0 and 2. And here's in the second region. So we've reduced the error in this portion somewhat, and reduced it somewhat in this portion, but we still have an error that's in there. So when I do that, I get 4 minus 0 divided by uh, 2 and 2. And here we see the value at uh, 0, the value at 2, and the value at 1. And we've reduced you get a value of just over 12,000 and that gives us an error of 0. Point, I'm sorry 133. So now let's take a look at Simpson's 3 eighths rule. Um, here I, I, I show the formula itself. These are the values that I get when I'm taking the step size um, h equal to b minus a over n, where n in this case is going to be 3. 
And so I have 1.33, 2.67, and 4, and I show the y values. And I plug this in to get an estimate of 6825. And so I've reduced my error down to 30.8%. And we're obviously not doing very well on our estimates, so let's consider a scheme where we weigh the estimates to try to improve what we're doing. And this is going to get us into the integration of equations. Um, when we um, look at equations as opposed to just tabular data, we have Richardson's extrapolation and Romberg's integration algorithm, Gauss quadrature. And this lecture is focused on Richardson's extrapolation. So here's what we have. If we take um, two step sizes and one of the step sizes is half the other step size, then we can improve our estimate by taking four-thirds um, of the one step size, the H2, and negative one-third of the H1 and this should improve our estimate. So let's go back to this problem I was just looking at. So when we have two applications of the trapezoidal, one when you have it one step and one when you have two steps, we ended up with the following two graphical interpretations. So you can see that we have some error here and we have quite a bit of error in this one. Now here's the solutions we came up with when h was equal to 2 and when h, h2 was equal to 2 and h1 was equal to 4. Therefore, h2 is h1 divided by 2. So if I put this into my formula, so I have the answer from, one, from h2 and the answer from h1, I get a value of 8,240. Now granted, we still have a lot of error in this term, but the point is I took something that had 357% error and something that had 133% error, and I reduced it to a term that has 58% error using this technique, which is basically a weighting scheme. Now let's talk about why this works. So we're going to set up this technique for using two estimates of an integral to compute a third more accurate approximation. The estimate and the error associated with a multiple application of the trapezoidal rule can be represented by this equation, where i is equal to the integral estimated at that step size plus the error that's associated with that estimate. And here, the i without um, the um, parentheses h is the exact value of the integral. And of course, our step size is b minus a over n. So if we make two separate estimates, so we have our estimate plus our error, and the two estimates have h1 and h2 as their um, step sizes, we can set these equal to each other. And we recall the error of the multiple application of the trapezoidal rule is shown here. So if we assume that the average second derivative is constant regardless of the step size, we can then say that the error with h1 and the error of h2, that ratio, which is what I'm showing here, is going to be approximately equal to the square, the ratio of the square of the step size because of this term that we have here. And so if I rearrange the error associated with H1, I get the following equation. And I substitute that into the previous equation that I had. And when I do this, I get that the error in H2 is equal to uh, the estimated H1 minus the estimated H2 divided by 1 minus H1 over H2 squared. Go ahead and see that that's indeed um, a substitution that you would get. Thus, we've developed an estimate of the truncation error in terms of the integral estimates and their step sizes. 
This estimate then gets plugged back into here. So we're going to just come over here and plug it into our original equation to yield an improved estimate of the interval. So I have the estimate at H2, the difference between the two estimates, and it's something that is relating the step sizes. So for the special case where H2 is equal to H1 divided by 2, we end up with I is approximately equal to 4 thirds the estimate of the integral at H2 minus 1 third times the estimate of the integral at H1. We can continue to improve the estimates by successively halving of the step sizes to yield a general formula, which I show here. But the only one we're going to do in, in, in terms of this class is the first one. But take note that we can continue to improve our estimate by doing this weighting scheme. And that ends the lecture on Richardson's extrapolation.